Hello and good morning and welcome to this lesson all about creating exceptional quality content as well as getting into the mindset to serve your clients well. This is a topic that, um, quite frankly, I have been insecure about for a long time and I have also been harshly judged for for a long time. And I've come out of that. Because here's the thing. I don't like to teach things if I'm still insecure about it. I don't like to teach things in this setting if I'm struggling with self-doubt and worry about it. Now, there's there comes a time where it's okay to press through that. I don't make that a rule. Um, but I have developed a methodology to break out of self-doubt and insecurity that whether I'm feeling it or not, sometimes I can literally feel self-doubt and insecurity in the morning when I wake up and then I have a process that I go through to break me out of it and then I can see a comment on social media from a rude person that snaps me right back into it later and now I'm like, okay, I got to go to work and figure out what that was. <laughs> it happened yesterday, literally. Um, I was supposed to record this training right here last night and just couldn't. And in fact, I had to just, I just had to go to sleep and it, it took me, I've been up since uh, three in the morning. It's taken me about three hours just to process through uh, the last night and all that to feel the confidence to be able to teach this to you because it's such a deep area for me. And in fact, the comment that the person made on my social media was a direct mental attack. I don't like using the word attack, but like my brain attached to it and it literally was the very thing that would shut down um, my ability to teach this lesson today. Isn't that interesting? It's very interesting. And so then by processing through that, I've come out the other side um, and listen, I, you know, what's amazing is I've learned how to not let that affect my family life. I didn't know how to do that a couple months ago. I learned how to not let it affect my client life. Couldn't do that about, a, about a year ago. Um, and I've learned how to not let it take over my life recently. You know, we had a, a thing in the accelerator group where I wasn't answering questions and sales copy and things like that sometimes for up to six six days um and you know uh that can happen sometimes where you see a distraction something takes your focus off and that's really the biggest thing is it's distractions and it's learning to control your distractions number one there's a great book that I do recommend called Indistractable. How to Control Your Attention and Choose Your Life. Um, and it was written by a guy who studied about how social media distracts us and, and the different apps that we have and things like this and, and all of that and what distracts us and pulls us off track to help us with our focus and our relationships. And just, you know, I've read this book twice I haven't read it in, in a long time, but the lessons keep coming back to me. And so I recommend it. In an age of ever-increasing demands for our attention, how do we get the best from technology without letting it get the best of us? It's, it's, a, it's a powerful book. Um, highly, highly recommend it. There's free bonuses you can go grab. Um, the author is amazing. I love the even just you know the people who are endorsing the book. I mean, it's it's endorsed by some of the some of the best uh, minds of our of our generation, and so and he wrote another book. Some of y'all might enjoy, called Hooked: How to Build Habit Forming Products. He you know it basically is the playbook of Silicon Valley, creating the most uh, addictive products and processes on the planet. And I've actually not read Hooked, but I've heard a lot of great things about it. It's in multiple languages because what it is is it's, it's, it's literally about what it takes to create products 
in technology that keep people using them and keep them engaged. Okay, so if you want to know how to keep people engaged, hooked is where it's at. Uh, and then what he said was he almost felt like a moral obligation to write this one. It's how to get unhooked. <laughs> it's like the uh, it's like the methadone. Uh, to and he was joking on that. You know, like this is a like you get addicted to the to the uh, to the opiate to the crack, and then this is what gets you unhooked as far as that goes. And the thing is, is most all of us are using addictive products that use exactly what he's teaching in this book right here. Um, this is about how to like not let things distract us. And it breaks down the psychology and the science behind distraction. It's incredible um, just to learn and understand that, okay? what I, I'm not talking about that though here today. What I want to talk about is um, once you can learn to control those distractions, which again, that's been a, it's been a journey for me for a long time um, that I have struggled with, that I have dealt with, that I have tried to do. Um, once you learn to control those distractions, now we got to figure out, okay, how do I um, very quickly wire my brain situationally to do the things that I need to, need to do? And this came by necessity for me as a father with my one-year-old. And so what I'm about to do is pass on to you some lessons that I have learned being a father for 15 months um, so that you don't need, whether you have children or not, um, you're going to be able to learn some really cool stuff that I've learned that has allowed me to reduce my work hours to where I actually get to spend more time with my son and my wife and, and I'm living the happiest life I've ever lived right now on a daily basis. Um, this is also the result of about three years of therapy <laughs> and all of that um, with you. Okay, so again, but I'm not a therapist. I'm not a psychiatrist. I am not certified in any of the stuff that I'm teaching here today. Do not treat any of this as a way of practicing medicine or anything like that. One thing that I would recommend, though, is below this lesson, you're going to see the transcript, okay? And we teach you how to use chat GPT. A prompt that you could literally use is, is copy and paste that whole transcript. And before you copy and paste it, type into chat GPT. Something like this. I have a transcript from a lesson all about the content of the lesson below. You, you don't even need to actually tell it what the content is. You can literally just tell it all about the content below. And it'll be like, oh, okay. And then the AI will literally be like, what's the content about? And it'll figure it out. Um, it's a little hack to save you a lot of time and effort to not know what the right prompt is. You can literally just tell it, it's all about the content below. No, like if you told a normal person that, it would be like, what? But telling AI that, it actually is a little hack. <laughs> to save you a lot of headaches. Um, I have questions about this content. And by the way, you can use this for any of the transcripts that we have in the members area here to save you a lot of time and to ask questions of ChatGPT for certain things, okay? Um, please read and review the transcript and then let's proceed to answer my questions, okay? So like for instance, I could literally just take uh, this lesson right here about mastering group dynamics, copy and paste it. I press control C or control A. So that's how I did it so quickly. Control A, it grabs the whole page. I don't care if it grabs complete, continue, all that extra stuff. Press control C to copy it, control V right there, paste it. Chat GPT grabbed the whole thing. And then I can ask questions on the fly. Great, I reviewed the transcript. It covers comprehensive approach to managing and optimizing group coaching dynamics, focusing on engagement, value delivery, adapting, setting boundaries. Can I assist you with other questions? So like that's a great way, by the way, to um, even with your own content, to unpack new things. Like for instance, here's the one thing that I like to do. Can you brainstorm 20 ideas for YouTube videos based on the topic above that might go viral and attract people to buy this training from the above 
transcript, okay? So I'm showing you this and also teaching you something at the same time. You could literally do this with any piece of content, with any transcript and anything like this. On YouTube, every piece of video that exists on YouTube has a transcript that is publicly available. Okay. So like this is a this is a NASCAR podcast that I just love from Dale Earnhardt Jr. I've been I've been obsessed with NASCAR my whole life and I've gotten recently gotten back into it. And so anyways, um cuz those guys are really wealthy. <laughs> they got a lot of money. They got way and they and they don't flaunt it that much and I like that. Anyways, you can pause any video on YouTube. Basically go to the description, click on show transcript. And then I click on these three dots and I click toggle timestamps. I turn those off. And then you see how this scrolls. You, I scroll to the top. You click here. And then you hold your mouse down. So you got to do this on a computer. And then scroll all the way to the bottom right here. And you can literally do this with ChatGPT as well. Uh, almost like the same prompt that we did right here. This is all going to make sense like in like five minutes while I'm showing you all this. I, I'm, I'm sure you have no interest in NASCAR. But this is all going to make sense in like five minutes. Okay. So again, same, same prompting. We should probably add that to our prompt document. Yeah, let's add this. Let me just scroll down to what to do. Um, answer questions about a transcript. Let me add that one right there. Okay, cool. And I want to I want to start updating the prompt document to start to add some of these because a lot of people are like they rely on this a lot, and so you know. Hopefully this is helpful to some people. All right. So uh, let me just take like this Dale Jr. one right here. I could even go through and I could copy the title, description, and a bunch of the comments, even some of the top comments, whatever those are. Literally just like copy. So I, like, I'm crowdsourcing so much information just by doing this. Opinions and everything. It's kind of incredible. And I can sort by, yep, top comments, exactly. Boom, top comments. Now this is a great way, just any video you find on YouTube, you can literally unpack it, dive deeper, start asking questions. So I don't even know what this video is. Sounds like you've shared it about various topics related to financial decisions, personal interests. What does it say about Dale's uh, financial uh, mindset? Here we go. So again, I don't even know what the video is about. Transcript reveals quite a bit about his mindset, showcasing someone who's both cautious and thoughtful about his spending. It's amazing. And you can do this with literally any transcript as far as this goes and then unpack any topic deeper by doing this, okay? So this is one aspect of brainstorming for content for you. You can either brainstorm by using other people's transcripts. This way to come up with like new ideas as far as this goes. Um, and so then what I could do is I could literally take this that it unpacked right here. Can you, can you um, brainstorm 20 possible ideas for content that a financial literacy coach could teach that borrows from the lessons above and the following. So now, like if you're a financial literacy coach, literally just taking that video, if I liked it, if I'm feeling something from it, now this gives me brainstormed ideas. If you find a viral video of some kind from some YouTuber that you like, that's why YouTube is really starting to be a great resource for us. This can then help you brainstorm that. Lessons from the rich and famous, overcoming financial anxiety, I mean, literally, this is like a master class right here on, on content and even courses that you could create just from a podcast episode from a NASCAR driver. <laughs> I 
imagine how much better it would be if you pulled it from somebody that's in your own industry. See what I'm saying? Okay. So again, group coaching dynamics, same type of a thing, secret to engaging your group audience, why people thrive in group coaching, others don't. Mastering group dynamics, how to create high value coaching environment, top mistakes coaches make, leveraging technology, the future of coaching and AI, okay? Build a community around a program. And so like I'm even showing you how I you're able, you can literally get the most out of the accelerator by using AI this way and using it with YouTube because this is how I brainstorm stuff all the time myself. Okay. So there's that idea right now, right there. Okay. Now here's something that I want to set that I want to, I just want to try out. Are there, are there any forms of entertainment, entertainment media that deal with the same uh, lane vibe or topic of the above content and brainstormed ideas such as music, songs, movies, fictional books, or even other that haven't been mentioned that I can look at, okay? And please don't check out here when I'm talking about this. Some of y'all check out when I talk about anything related to entertainment. I need you to not do this. I need you to not check out when I'm talking about entertainment. Okay? Because you may not understand why this is important, and I and I and I get that. But this is one of the most effective ways for you to actually become the best coach and one of the best teachers you can possibly be. So we're going to use these two examples: group dynamics and the NASCAR one with the same exact questions. The King's Speech, Coach Carter, by the way, these are great movies, Dead Poet Society, The Intern, Tuesdays with Maury, Lean In, read that book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. So again, these are even all daring greatly. I love that book. So, so again, uh, let's see, Eye of the Tiger, Survivor, okay, Beautiful Day by U2. Tim Ferriss show. How I built this. Those these are all great podcasts that I love. On being. TED Talks. These media selections, entertainment, inspiration, insights into the dynamics of mentorship. Can you give me even more examples of entertainment in the categories? Above, certainly, here's additional examples, and I love doing this. Freedom Writers, again, I love that movie as well. These are literally, oh my gosh, Fighting Forrester. These are literally movies that influenced me as a kid. <laughs> Queer Eye. Queer Eye is actually a great show on how to do, like, a group, group dynamic. That's amazing. Mindset, the new psychology of success. The Art of Possibility, The Alchemist, Dare to Lead. I've not read The Alchemist or Art of Possibility. Let's see, Hall of Fame by The Script and Will I Am, unwritten by Natasha Bedingfield. Okay. Tony Robbins podcast. Now here's, this is what I, I was trying to get it to give me more music. Can you give me 20 more songs related to all the above? The vibe, the tone, the story, the... The goals, the outcome of the content of group dynamics, etc. Okay? Huh? Watch this. Some of y'all, I don't know how much music y'all listen to, but Apple Music is streaming um, and Spotify, and you can build playlists, and you can literally 
build a playlist. These are, by the way, these are all incredible songs right here. If I built this playlist right here, even me just reading these songs, I'm remembering what the songs are, okay? <laughs> Pop Anthem, <laughs> Lose Yourself by Eminem, On Top of the World, Unstoppable by Sia, Titanium by David Guetta, Shake It Off by Taylor Swift. Yep. Yeah, so anyways, this gets you into that kind of like, it repeated the same song, that's funny. Into like the vibe of what we're trying to accomplish even in lessons like this. Now for copyright purposes, I can't actually play these songs on the video here, but I could literally build a playlist of the ones that just mentioned and listen to that to get me ready for this lesson right here. I could turn on some of these movies in the background. I could literally turn on Coach Carter right now on my TV to prepare while I'm washing dishes or things like this. So that's why I subscribe to all these different streaming video platforms and things like that. Because a, a movie like Coach Carter, by the, I'll tell you this, that I love that, Coach Carter. Y'all have never seen Coach Carter? It's legitimately a master class in coaching. <laughs> and what a good coach does. Now, is he perfect? No. Made mistakes. But it's inspiring. And if you've never seen Coach Carter, I highly recommend it. If you've never seen Freedom Riders, too, I recommend it. This is another one. Because she led and coached. And, and by the way, she's amazing. I mean, my, my son... Oh wait, that's Hillary Swank. That's not. Um, gosh, she looks so much like the other the other gal. She looks a lot like um, the gal that Hillary Swank. It's a, they typecast in Hollywood. Who's the one? Uh, Jennifer Garner. Yeah, they they have a similar like look to them for sure. Um, and that's like uh, you know, it's typecasting is how is how Hollywood cast certain characters, you know. Um, yeah, Freedom Riders, incredible. Coach Carter, incredible. About group dynamics. Y'all could literally learn lessons. That go deeper into what I taught about this course just by simply watching some of these movies that are mentioned here. Finding Forrester, a story of unique mentorship between a reclusive writer and a, pro a, a prodigious young African-American scholar athlete. Um, Dead Poet Society. That's another good one. <clears throat> Robin Williams. <coughs> Again, because he's this, he's a mentor to these boys. Is it perfect? No, none of these are perfect. These are movies. They're emotional. They're not meant for you to model your life after. They're entertainment. But they teach lessons. And they'll get you, if you watch entertainment, they get you into the vibe and the feeling that you're looking for. So that's exactly what I did this morning. As I turned on a certain playlist of music, movies, I did so last night. And I don't even watch the whole movie either sometimes. I might go back and finish it. That's another thing, too. Like, when it comes to entertainment, you don't need to listen to the whole song. Once you're getting what you want out of it, if you're using it for this purpose, you don't need to finish it. You can literally just use it for the thing that you're wanting to use it for. Okay? 
see, same thing right, right here. Mo Money, Mo Problems by Notorious B.I.G., Rich Girl, Wolf of Wall Street, Pursuit of Happiness. Yeah, that's great. Richest Man in Babylon, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Shark Tank, Billions. These are all great pieces of content. Kind of gets you in the mindset of what Dale Jr. is talking about right here. Yeah. It's so cool. And so, like, uh, let's, let's, let's create, like, um, can you brainstorm 20 more songs? You know? Let's see. Let's see if we can come up with more, like more songs, like a songs list. Money by Pink Floyd, Price Tag, Can't Buy Me Love, Thrift Shop, and listen. Some of these songs, I you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be feeling. If you're not feeling a song, skip it. <clears throat> Don't use it. Thrift Shop's a good one though. If I had a million dollars. Uh, the opportunity, uh, mo money, mo problems, rich girl. Gold digger, yep. Billionaire by Travi McCoy. And so the idea is you can literally use chat GPT and entertainment media to help tap you into certain certain mindsets and things like this are there any video games or video game game series that involve the topics above or might include similar skill sets or mental frameworks even that indirectly might encourage the above uh, vibe or goals, okay? I ask this all the time too of it, and then I'll literally go grab, like if I'm really wanting to learn something, if I'm wanting to teach something, by the way, this comes from learning and teaching. Some of y'all might have been watching this for 27 minutes and your brain is checking out and you're just like, I don't understand. I literally just bought the Animal Crossing series like the other day. I just bought a copy of Animal Crossing for this exact purpose. And I didn't even realize it. I just intuitively was like, I think Animal Crossing is going to help me teach certain concepts to people. This is amazing. Stardew Valley, exactly. Farming Simulator, Roller Coaster Tycoon, City Skyline, Wall Street Raider, Capitalism 2. So these are video games even that could get you into a certain vibe. Monopoly. Monopoly is a great one. Let's try this for the, the, the group coaching dynamics. This will be interesting. What we see right here. It's probably going to be like Hero's Journey type based stuff like RPGs and things like that. Or maybe sports games. We'll see. Life is Strange series. Yeah, that's a good one. Sort of like Legend of Zelda. <laughs> exactly. Persona. Yeah, Persona, that's right. Persona. Yeah. Final Fantasy. These are literally game series that I've played over the years. Undertale. Never played that one. I would say like games like FIFA or even like NHL and stuff too. Um, what about games like FIFA or NHL? or Madden, or NBA, team-based sports games. I'm curious to see what it says about that. Can you unpack this multi-dimensionally? Skyrim, yeah, these are literally all game series that I have poured myself over and over and over and over and over again, <laughs> which is crazy. And it's, and it's helped me to become better at the coaching and all that. Let's see, team-based, rich multi-dimensional experience, and all they simulate the physical aspects. Technical skills, improving in technical skills, strategic thinking, yeah. So again, what this is doing is, it's, a, it's all about getting your brain wired into a mindset that is able to accomplish 
the things that you're trying to do, even if they are difficult or hard or you get distracted or things come up or stuff like that, you're able to tap right in, be engaged and not disconnected. Even when you got chaos going on in your life, you can actually use certain forms of media and entertainment, which actually seems to serve better than nonfiction sometimes to get you engaged into the thinking and stuff like that. Me even just reading this type of stuff right here because I have engaged with all of these different forms of media, it's literally triggered neurotransmitters in my brain to tap me right into what I'm teaching right now, into the vibe that I'm wanting to do, into what I'm trying to present and stuff like that. And so for me as a teacher, for me to show up in this group to be able to give advice and clarity on content and create content, and this has also helped me to improve how I express myself. I do this when I'm consulting a client. I do this when I'm doing a one-on-one -on -one coaching. I do this when I'm about to go into a hard experience or something that I've not done before or things like that because it helps break me out of the emotional and mental anxiety and things like that to be able to engage on these different levels, okay? So that's what I wanted to just share with you is that for you to be able to go to the next level of where you want to go when it comes to creating content, when it comes to teaching your audience, is learn to wire your neurotransmitters in a way that is conducive to you being the best possible version of yourself as a coach or mentor. And so what we consume, what comes into us, if you're just watching content that makes you angry or upset or numbs you out or things like that, take a break from that maybe for an afternoon or, or a day. I mean, for me, that's exactly what I do. I'll take a break from stuff and I'll spend all night and then the morning just med And when I talk about meditating, it's not even like sitting down and just meditating anymore. It's like I'm doing other things. I'm playing these video games, I'm watching these movies, I'm engaging, I'm going on my treadmill and reading books, I might download it on Kindle, that's why Kindle Unlimited is also really, really cool for that, because you get access to all these different books. And so, and ChatGPT is like having access to a ton of books as well, because ChatGPT can literally break down for you certain concepts as far as this goes, okay? So anyways, I hope that this was helpful for you. Some of y'all might be watching this and you're still kind of not connecting the dots as to what I'm sharing. Would love for you to ask questions in the group on some of our group calls about some of this and how to use this for yourself. Maybe I can bring some clarity. And that's one of the number one things when it comes to group dynamics is I'm able to answer your questions. If you're expecting me to have the perfect exact answer that you're needing in my trainings and lessons, that's an unreasonable expectation. And, and if you're holding yourself to that same standard, no wonder you've not created your own courses. No wonder you've not put your own content out there. And so realize this is a group coaching program and membership to where you go through a training like this and then you ask one question in the group and then I'm able, I'm able to answer or have a dialogue back and forth. Maybe you don't like that kind of interaction. You just want the course to give you all the right content. Uh, it's not how this works. So that's not the best way to actually engage things. If you're wanting to actually create a program that actually truly highly engages people and produces results for people, you got to also learn how to break past some of the stuff that maybe makes you feel uncomfortable. Chat GPT can be very helpful to help you figure out, you know, maybe why you feel uncomfortable with this. Let's ask this. Why would someone feel uncomfortable asking questions in a group? about the subject matter and getting angry that the group leader didn't teach something in the main lesson. Because this helps me even understand maybe where people are coming from as far as that goes. And I'm not saying you're, you're getting a angry or anything like that, but maybe, maybe you are. It's okay. 
fear of judgment or reaction, social anxiety, past experiences, negative experiences, asking questions in a group, mismatched expectation, unmet needs, they're not mad, it can lead to frustration or anger towards the group leader, lack of transparency. So again, I am being very transparent with you as part of that goes. Does that make sense? And so, you know, uh, let's see, dominant participants, a few dominate the conversation. Lack of psychological safety. They don't feel secure or respected. I could, I could do better at this right here. Participants place responsibility on learning entirely on the leader instead of it being a group effort. Imposter syndrome, perfectionism, emotional regulations. Strategies for group leaders. Foster a safe environment. Uh, actively work to create a space. And by the way, and this is how we're going to end this. Watch this. Encourage participation. Address questions proactively. Provide feedback channels. What are some great ways that leaders can brainstorm some possibilities on this, as well as come up with additional forms of media, music, movies, books, video games, etc., that can actually encourage these things. I'm going to put them below again. That's going to be interesting. Creating a group environment with psychological safety enables members to feel secure and respected. Demonstrate active listening by summarizing what you said, asking follow up questions. Make an effort to engage quieter group members by asking for their input directly. Establish ground rules, share personal experiences, celebrate questions and curiosity instead of saying it's a silly question. Offer anonymous feedback options. Facilitate group interaction. That's pretty good. The culture codes. Secrets to highly successful groups. That's interesting. Dare to lead. For, uh, Freedom Riders, Dead Poet Society. Yeah. Lean on me. Life is Strange. That's another video game. An Undertale. Power of Vulnerability by Brene Brown. Building a Psychologically Safe Workplace. This is one I would be interested in watching. I can go find this TED Talk and watch it. And you can literally just then type in a TED Talk. It's literally 11 minutes long. <laughs> we can, let's see if we can hack it this way. We're going to take the transcript. And we're going to say... Can you brainstorm additional lessons about fostering safety based on the following? And then I'm literally going to just take the comments and copy those over as well. Encourage sharing experiences of failure and learning to demonstrate vulnerability. Train members to actively listen with empathy. That's good. Learn how to train that better. Teach how to give and receive feedback constructively. Create a speak up culture. Facilitate inclusive meetings. Dealing with disagreement. Encourage cross functional collaboration. Leadership for psychological safety. Daring Greatly. Yeah, I love that book. I highly recommend y'all read Daring Greatly. The Fearless Organization. Interesting. This might be a book that I might pick up. Inside Out. That's a really good one. That's all about like different parts and things like that. You will be found, dear Evan Hansen. I love that song. Celeste. Interesting. Not heard of that that video game. Oh, that's interesting. That's a it's a newer game. Huh. Highly ranked too. Might have to check that one out. All right, y'all. There we go. So that's gonna help you, I think, in just being a better coach, getting yourself into the mindset that you're looking for, utilizing AI and media 
and entertainment to your advantage to be able to tap you right into the mindset, the framework, the brain space that you're looking for. And you, and you can literally do the process that I just showed you in this video for any niche, any topic, and start pulling in videos and transcripts and even articles and stuff into this as far as that goes and really start to move into a whole new level of how you do things. My mom and I have done this for years, her and I both, this process. In fact, Danny Johnson is actually one of the first people that I know that she would do the same thing. Uh, Rick Pino is another, another one. A lot of the best mentors that I know actually do this process subconsciously and they don't even know they're doing it. And then I meet a lot of people that are trying to succeed and they think that what I just told you is like bad. And I'm like, no, it's actually life-changing. So, all right, there we go.